and welcome to Meow Mix, the Carolina Panthers podcast. My name is Steven. My name is Jerry. And we have a bit of a Meow Mix snack for you today. A DJ short podcast. Shark. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Shark. DJ Shark. Now I'm going to get that stuck in all you father's you heads out there. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, the Panthers went big game fishing and caught a shark, DJ Shark, <laughs> joining the team on a one-year deal. Uh, we don't have money yet, but on SpotRack, his market value is $9.5 million. Last year, he signed a one-year $10 million deal with Detroit. I would imagine it's somewhere in the 8 to $10 million range. I do, too. I don't think year. it's going to be a big contract, especially since it's a one-year deal. Yeah. Another prove it deal for him <clears throat> as, you know, we'll go through his injury history, but that's well, a that's, big concern. Yeah, that's the main concern is he is often injured. He has never played a full season. Um his best season was 2019 with Jacksonville where he played 15 games. Uh 73 receptions, 1008 yards, eight touchdowns. He did make the Pro Bowl that year as well. Um so if that's the kind of production that we can expect from him, then honestly, that basically replaces DJ Moore. But can you expect that from DJ Shark? I, uh, if he is healthy, he has the ability to be a number one receiver. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. A- every time he plays, he he plays well. It's just he's not available. He's injury <clears throat> prone, and it's sad. But the guy is six foot three, runs a four three. I mean, yeah. he's a, he's a special special physical talent. I hope he stays healthy, but I think if he is healthy, I think it's a nice pairing with him, Thielen, D, or TMJ, and LaVisca Chanel. I think that you can piece together a decent wide receiver room with that. I think it's an improvement over last year. I mean, like, if you look at our skill positions as a whole, you know, assuming that yeah, I'm assuming we'll draft someone and, you know, but I think free agent wise, we're probably about tapped out now. Um, you know, look at the receivers you just mentioned. You've got Hayden Hurst at tight end. Mm-hmm. You've got Miles Sanders at running back, who is going to be a better receiver out of the backfield than Deontay Foreman was. I think overall, and you're bringing back all your offensive linemen, overall, the offense should be better. It is more skilled, in my opinion, than last year, even losing DJ Moore. You got to lose CMC, too, on that. that, That's where it kind of is very hard to really judge because you had two top-tier guys in CMC and DJ Moore. Yeah, but CMC was gone. CMC was traded before the season. Like, I'm I'm looking at... No, no, no. He wasn't traded before the season. He was traded before the season ended, is what I'm saying. Okay. He he was traded mid midway through the season, actually early in the season. So when I'm looking at what we could have expected, like had we re-signed Deontay Foreman, right? Mm-hmm. Had we not had we kept DJ Moore and just kind of run it back, I think this is a better version of that. Is what I I'm think saying. so too. I I think you're gonna get a lot more out of a, some of these guys than they mm-hmm. were at their f- former places. Uh not talking DJ Shark specifically, but, you know, Adam Thielen has said basically the new regime when they came in didn't fu- didn't like him like the other regime did. You know, mm-hmm. they, they really liked Justin Jefferson and really focused their, you know, point of emphasis on passing game to him. Rightfully so. Justin Jefferson is <laughs> yeah, probably a top one amazing. or two <laughs> receiver of the league. Right. But I'm just saying, you know, here... The ball's going to get spread around. I really like this. Yeah, I mean, I could see where you're seeing that. Yeah, I mean, you've got TMJ with another year under his belt. Mm -hmm. You've got Thielen, who doesn't have a Justin Jefferson opposite him, right? No. Uh, Assuming Shark can stay healthy for, you know, say 14 games, something like that. uh, That's a really nice piece. Uh, Yeah, Yeah. I think uh, whoever we end up drafting... They're not going to be coming in with the worst skill position group in the league. No, there's no no number one receiver on this team. But I agree with you. I think we got about three or four number twos or two slash threes. So yeah. 
And and maybe TMJ develops into that number one. He was looking uh, really it, good at the end of the season. Yeah. If Shark can stay healthy, he's got the talent to be a number one. I 100% agree with that. If Thielen finds the fountain of youth, he's been a number one before. You know, and it wasn't that long ago. So, I mean, it's – there's a lot of guys that have the potential – to be wide receiver one. It's just which one of them is going to take the leap and can our rookie QB get it out of them? Yeah. Right. Like DJ shark is a one year deal. So he's coming in, he's going to be with the rookie QB at the worst. The rookie QB is going to be for his career most likely. Right. So how does that change who you want the Panthers to draft would you rather them get like a Bryce Young who maybe is more NFL ready in terms of intangibles and kind of the coach on the field type of the guy or do you still feel the safe route with CJ Stroud who is just as accurate as Bryce Young but you know still has maybe more growing to do in I, terms I would of still go with Stroud style. yeah because I, <clears throat> I don't know if that growing is as much as people are making and I Again, I see his floor just being higher than Bryce Young's. I, I think their ceilings could be about the same, but I think his floor is just higher. Even though Bryce Young is incredible, 1B, yeah. but that's just the way I see it. Yeah. I think I, I think I maybe see it opposite from you. I think Young's ceiling is higher. I agree that his floor is lower just because of the injury concerns. Which, again, he didn't get injured a lot in college, but the NFL is different. Like, the defenders he's going to be facing are brick walls. Um, all of them, right? Not just like you play Georgia once a year. You're playing Georgia every year, a, a better version of Georgia every single game, right, in terms of defense. So that would be concerning but yeah so, i mean so quick question I, then yeah. we'll get back to dj shark this sure. was <laughs> why do you think bryce young has a higher ceiling than I just, DJ think, shark? I just think he's a better i think it just he's, he's a better quarterback he's he's better in terms of finding passing lanes right now uh he's just as accurate he's got just as good an arm um his I don't know about CJ Stroud's like film study or, uh, you know, command of the huddle, things like that. But I know Bryce Young is elite in those aspects. I mean, we heard Frank Reich say that. Um, I don't know. I just think, again, the ceiling is very arbitrary, right? Like, yeah. Anthony Richardson probably has a higher ceiling than all of these guys. I agree. If he hits perfectly. So it's just an opinion. <laughs> just like Josh Allen had a huge ceiling, and now right. he's t he's actually getting there, but he could have been right. a huge bust too. <clears throat> no, I. I mean, I think Bryce Young's ceiling is probably Drew Brees. See, when you look at like his his size and everything, like that's probably his ceiling if he hits on everything, and that's Hall of Famer. Yeah, I I just my thing is he doesn't seem to get the ball out as fast as Drew Brees. To be that type, that's well, Drew Brees is you know a generational type. Oh, no, 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 no. He really getting, is. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to again. We're the only comparison at this point is the size, the fact that they were both small quarterbacks trying and, to make it work in the NFL. It's a big man's game. And uh, Bryce Young's two inches shorter. I mean that that's a good difference. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well. Either way, go listen to our draft profile uh, on uh, Bryce Young and CJ Stroud if you want more on those guys. But, yeah, we're real excited about DJ Shark coming here. I mean, this is the guy that, uh, you know, we've been talking about him, feels like, for a month now. Probably realistically it's been a couple of weeks. But mm -hmm. I like it. I, it's a good move. Uh, depending on what the numbers is, I'm sure it's going to be a very reasonable deal. Yeah, I can't imagine what the deal is going to be that would be – outstanding like you said 10 million seems probably realistic something like yeah. that maybe a little bit lower <clears throat> would be nice but yeah it would be nice but you i wonder what the holdup was because probably money probably you know, money or years i mean maybe 
he saw the Thielen deal and he was like, well, I want three years, but I want 10 million a year. And they're like, well, we're not giving you 10 million a year for three years because, you know, two years ago you played four games over the last two years, you played 15 games. Yeah. Right. Um, so I think that's probably what the holdup was, was, you know, just the years. Um, but yeah, well, I mean, we'll see when the money comes out, we'll see what it is. Maybe they got him for like $6 million or something. I mean, that would be incredible, but, yeah. um, speculation at this point. And it looks like he mostly plays <clears throat> on the outside, which would make sense in mm-hmm. my opinion. He's a big uh, guy. Yeah. Yeah. Six, three, like I said, um, I'm just kind of looking at his chart right now in, in the PFF depth chart, you know, mm-hmm. he does have some dropsies, but nothing compared to what we've seen. And usually those drops are around the medium and short range. He's actually more consistently catching the ball deep, 20 yards or plus. He had 15 targets, had seven receptions. I mean, so a lot of those could be bad throwing balls. Let's, you know, 20 yards deep. But, yeah, you know, but I mean, he last year he had – uh, sixteen point seven yards per reception, mm-hmm. uh, which is that's pretty good. That's the highest of his career outside of twenty twenty one, where he only played four games. But um, you know, when he's played more than ten games, that's the best of his career. Yeah, I mean, he has a higher touchdown rate than DJ Moore. DJ has a more yards per game rate than DJ Shark. So that you know, and touchdowns are important. He's a big guy. He's bigger than DJ. So he's Mm going to be more of a red zone threat. Um, I think he's exactly what we needed. Assuming he stays healthy. Assuming he stays healthy. (laughs) Yes. That's, that's the big thing, you know, obviously. Yeah. But I, I, I I love what the Panthers have done. I love it because you're in trouble in the sense that you can't get all, all your needs in the draft. Mm -hmm. So they went and got some experience. They got solid players with Adam Thielen, DJ shark to pair with, uh, Terrace Marshall jr. And LaVisca Chenault and shy Smith. Mm -hmm. Again, no solid one, number one, but a bunch of guys that you can throw to and are consistent enough. You're going to give that quarterback a nice little group. And I keep forgetting to add Hayden Hurst, but yes, Hayden Hurst, Maybe because we haven't had a receiving tight end since Greg Olson. Yeah. I keep forgetting about him, but. No, that's the one I'm most excited about. <laughs> you spread the ball around. I mean, Cam Newton went, took Philly Brown, Jericho Cotri to the Super Bowl. I mean, yeah. I don't expect our rookie quarterback to do that, but I'm just saying you can play well if you can control the offense, if the quarterback is accurate enough and can read the defense. These guys have Look, solid this, hands. This year is about, for the rookie quarterback, is about learning. It's mm-hmm. about getting used to the NFL. This year is not about going to the Super Bowl. Rarely, if ever, does a rookie quarterback take a team to the Super Bowl. I mean, we saw Purdy come in yeah. midway through last season and do some incredible things. Uh, but that is very much the exception. I mean, look at you know Peyton Manning goes three and thirteen his first year. Trevor Lawrence had a terrible first year. Uh, it took several years for Josh Allen to get to where he is. Pat Mahomes didn't even play his first year, right? He yeah. sat on the bench. You know, so these these guys just they don't just come in and light it up immediately. That's why I think it's important to get guys like Adam Thielen, DJ Shark, Hayden Hurst. You know, these big reliable receivers because like you said dj shark he doesn't he has drops every receiver has drops but like in 2019 his pro bowl season 118 targets he had two drops yeah that's it like that's that's your you know that's your ceiling for a guy like that Uh, and had he played a full season he'd have had you know 1100 yards so uh that's kind of where my head's at is we're putting this these skill possessions together. And we got Thielen for multiple years. We got Hurst for multiple years, uh, Sanders for multiple years. So I'm assuming if DJ Star- Shark stays healthy, they'll probably want to extend him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if he doesn't, I think you just probably start over at that position or you, you know, see if you can resign him for cheaper or something like that. But, you know, maybe he gets in here and he works with our new strength and conditioning guys and they're able to, you know, help him out and, <laughs> and keep him healthy. I don't know, but, uh, Let's hope. Yeah. Either way, great signing by the Panthers. I'm really excited about it. Uh, this team is coming together. 
you know, we got the draft. That's going to address the biggest hole in the team right now. Who knows what they do with the second round pick, third round picks. I mean, it's exciting. It really is. I mean, and he, he was healthy most of the end of the season. It was just that he got injured on week three and then they took about five games until he came back. So mm-hmm. oh, yeah. I hope it pans out. I really do. Um, his <clears throat> best game last year was against Carolina. And I was there freezing my butt off as we dominated. That <laughs> I remember. Game. Yeah, I remember that game. <laughs> and those yards were in garbage time, by the way. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, that was a good game for us last year. But, oh, uh, I don't know. Any final thoughts, Jerry? I like it. I really like what Scott Fitterer and Frank Reich have done. I think this is probably his best offseason that you could expect from them to have, if that makes any you, sense. You know what's funny is this deal didn't get done during C.J. Stroud's pro day. It didn't get done during Bryce Young's mm. pro day. But it did get done during Will Levis's pro day. So. <laughs> Read the tea leaves, people. <laughs> Um, I Maybe will... somebody wasn't quite as invested yeah. <laughs> in yeah. Will Levis's pro day than he was <laughs> in the other two. And uh, the just is, throwing it out there. <laughs> and someone said, I think someone re- repeated that, you know, Fitterer said that things probably wouldn't be happening this week because of all the pro days and they're going to spend their focus on that. Yeah. I, I think Fitterer and company realize the top two and are focusing on those two. I hope so. I, I hope that, so. I do too. I don't don't play the little guessing game or drop it back too far. If you're gonna drop back and you drop back to two, that's one thing. But other than that, don't 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 play yeah. cutesy. You yeah, made this don't. move to drop your uh, cojones on the table. You do it. Yeah, I don't think there's any any way they drop back any further than two, if at all. Uh, dropping back to two, I think, would be incredible if they could do it. If they could pull that off. And get maybe get a, I don't know, man. Houston has the twelfth pick too. Could you get the twelfth no. pick? No. I don't know. You could get probably get they that love next Bryce Young. Imagine if they could though, and they could get that receiver from Ohio State too. He's not coming out this year. No, not not uh, not Marvin Harrison. No, there's a. Ah, don't worry about it. Maybe he's not Ohio State, but whatever the the top one or two receiver, whoever, whatever his name is, the he's got TCU like a hyphenated receiver? last name. Maybe. Is that the guy with the hyphenated last name? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I haven't, Joby or something. I haven't looked at the top receivers in the draft just because, well, I know we're not hitting that. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah. I, uh, let's see. Hang on. Just one second while I find it. So it's bothering me now. Yeah, okay. Ohio State receiver Jackson Smith and Jigba. That's not how you say his last name. N-J-I-G-B-A. Everybody knows how to say this guy's name except me. But, uh, yeah, that's he's an Ohio State receiver, so that would be cool. It's not going to happen, like you said, but it would be cool. All right. Uh, I think that's going to do it. Yeah, we want to thank everyone for listening. If you like the show, please let, let your friends know. Please follow us on Twitter at Meow Mix Podcast. If you have any questions or comments, you can email us at mailbag at meowmixpodcast.com. If you leave us a five-star review with a comment on Apple Podcasts, we'll read it on the show. Uh, we'll be back next week with maybe another free agent update, definitely with the Will Levis draft profile. Uh, so until then, everybody stay safe out there and keep bounding. Wow, <laughs> wow,